the one thing that we keep hitting a hiccup on is our physical intimacy life. And there seems to be a disconnect as far as the quantity of how often it occurs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're just doing such a good job of dancing around this. Woo! What's up? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. I'm so glad that you're with us. We're talking about your marriage, your dating relationships, your mental health, your sex life, your kids, whatever you got going on in your life. My promise is I'm going to sit with you like I've been doing with people for, for, for two decades. I'm going to sit with you and we're going to figure out What's the next right step? If you want to be on the show, give me a buzz at 1-844-693-3291. It's 1-844-693-3291. Or go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K. And can we just pause for a second? We got to cap off last week. Like, the podcast went to number four in the country. It did, and it stayed there for three days. It stayed there. Mm -hmm. It was and, at number nine when the week started, yep. and I was like, oh, that was cute. And then it just kept going. And that means y'all are sharing it with your friends, and they're staying. And we're still in the top ten. I know. And we've been at number one in health and fitness this entire time. Dude, we're riding that one like a pony. Is that bad? I don't think that was bad. You looked at me. I so. Okay, good. I was just thinking like equine therapy. I wasn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> you were all thinking that. Well, come on, ride that train. See? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, hey, that's big. That means we can know. We are up to 38 listeners, America, and I'm glad. We're, man, we've basically doubled in the last four years. This is awesome. Hey, thank you so much for sharing the show, subscribing it, um, liking it. Please, please, if you haven't, just take a second and do that. And keep sending these episodes to your friends. If you have a buddy or um, uh, just a pal who's like, man, this, this, this one would hit home. Uh, send it to them. That really helps everybody out. I'm grateful, and it makes my heart feel big. All right, let's go out to Seattle, Washington. Ooh, we got a couple on the line. Let's go to uh, – walk me through how to do this, guys. We're going to go to Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth, what's up? Hi, good morning. How are you? Partying. How are you? About the same. Yeah, it's our version of sunny today, so I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> it's just less rainy gray. Yeah, is exactly. I just – like Pearl Jam sitting under a tree writing a sad song on a park bench. Yep. Just there in yep. If it, it fits the mood for sure. There you go. All right, cool. So I'm going to bring in, is this husband, Joel? Yes. All right, let's do this. Hang on a second. Let's bring in Joel. Hey, Joel, what's up, man? Not much. How you doing? I'm good. So as, are both of you on now? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, very cool. Are you all in the same house or are you all in different places? The same house. Uh, different places <laughs> of the apartment, yeah. Oh, apartment. But y'all are like far enough away that she can't hit you when you talk, right? That's the hope. Okay, a couple good. doors in between us. All right. Oh, a couple we're doors. Good. Oh, fantastic. All right. So go for it. What's up? Who, uh, Elizabeth, I, I clicked on you first, so you go first. Sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much for everything you and your team do. Um, I'm lucky enough to be one of the original 17 OG listeners. 17. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. So I listen to you guys whenever I side hustle because we're in the baby steps right now. And so whenever I'm out driving, trying to make the extra dollar. I listen to you guys, and I really appreciate everything you do. Well, I, I really, I'm grateful for that. Thanks for for riding with us for so long. It's awesome. Absolutely. So, my question is, I just would love to hear your expertise on how to draw healthy boundaries with your spouse. Um, I can give you a little backstory as well. Sorry, I'm super nervous. I didn't think oh. I was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Don't don't be. Don't, I mean, I can say don't be nervous, but that's like it doesn't matter. Um, okay. just go for it. And my promise is we have the best editing team in the world and they'll make you sound good. Beautiful. Okay. So my husband and I are really close. We're best friends. We get along very well when it comes to finances, goals, dreaming, you know, all of the above. The one thing that we keep hitting a hiccup on is our physical intimacy life. And there seems to be a dis <clears throat> excuse me. There seems to be a disconnect as far as the quantity of how often it occurs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're just doing such a good job of dancing around this. I'm trying so hard to be like no. radio friendly. Yeah, and we're so way past that, dude. Explicit. That ship sailed. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so I I have a hard time with initiating or even it being on my like sex being on my mind. Like I. A little backstory is I have only ever been with my husband and 
I went 25 years without anything. So I think I just trained myself to not need it. <laughs> and so now that I'm married, it's, it's hard to re-engage that muscle that I trained myself to not need. And I don't think my husband is asking for too much. I, I full, fully agree with him that we should be intimate more, but it's just like, it's just not on my on my head. Like, I just, I don't think about it. Like, it's like on the top 10, it's maybe 20. Like I just, I I have a really hard time. And then I, I know he feels hurt by it. Um, and so I'm just trying to, trying to get some tools, um, with trying to communicate correctly, trying to establish what each of us need, um, without either of us feeling like we're, giving more than we're receiving, if that makes sense, yeah, totally. uh, without, you know, dropping boundaries, but also like are boundaries necessary for a spouse? Cause I, I've never done this before. So I'm just learning, learning how, as how, I go. How long have you been married? <laughs> We've been married a year. We've been together for four. You may have the healthiest year in, like um, we're talking about sex frequency conversation that I've ever heard. Kudos oh, to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I give you guys kudos for that because you've given us a lot of language to be able to use without throwing daggers at each other. So. That's awesome. So I'm going to go to Joel, but before we go, I want you wrestling with something, okay? Sure. You said a, 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 a word a couple of times, and it's going to end up being very important, okay? And okay. I wrote it down in my little yellow pad here. Um, I think there's a story that I want you to challenge. That just because you waited until you were 25, that somehow something's not working right. Okay? Wow. That's a story Mm -hmm. you've told yourself, and it's not accurate. And uh, there there may be stories around the waiting, right? Like, if you do this, you're bad. Or, if like, those may be for real. Those may be ghosts that are still haunting you. But this idea that somehow you're broken is not accurate. Okay? Okay. The Sorry, second, I didn't think I'd get teared up at no, 8 o'clock my time. <laughs> no, you're good to go. And here's the word I want you to switch. Did you come from a, a pretty religious household? I actually don't. Okay. Um, you just I'm made this choice on your own? I'm religious, but yeah. yeah. Okay, good on, good on you for holding to your values, man. That's amazing. You you set, you yeah. you put a value anchored in, into concrete, and you said, this is who I'm going to be. Good for you. That's amazing. Um. I want you to start having a conversation that you may have never given yourself permission to have. You use the word need several times. And we're going to talk about why that's important. But I want you to start asking yourself, what do I want? And that's a radically different question. Okay? We're just going to let that Mm -hmm. float for a second. All right, Joel, give me your side of the story. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I just want to have sex, man. What's your side of the story? Uh, yeah, well, um, so yeah, big in conversations, we've had really deep conversations, even when we were friends. Um, and I know it's something I got to work on, but, uh, physical touch and quality time are like my, they are far above my love languages. Um, and you know, what's more quality time and physical touch than having sex with your wife? Um, so, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that's been like a thing for me and I, I want to enjoy it, um, uh, because I do come from a very strict religious household to where it was, you know, you don't do anything before marriage or, you know, going to the fiery gates. You burn in um, hell. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which, which makes sex super appealing, right? I, you know, it, it if makes, you do uh, this, you're going to be tortured for eternity. Ready? Go. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, so then that, uh, a little back history that then led me to getting married really, really young. Um, so I was married before, um, and, uh, you know, when you're getting married for the wrong reasons, it just, it, it usually doesn't end up very well. Um, so going through that divorce, then remarriage and going, okay, now I can fix all the things that I did wrong in the first marriage. And, uh, this should be great. Um, and you know, when you're in the honeymoon phase, everything is awesome and great. And, and then reality sits in and we got, we got married and everything. And then it's like, okay, 
No, it was like all of a sudden the brakes got pumped, and I'm like, okay, I know you've talked about you know as many green lights and as few red lights as possible to help the the intimacy, and so trying to do that and and create all these green lights for uh, for Elizabeth and uh, making sure that she feels safe and comfortable, and we have the conversations and. Sure enough, her language is uh, words of affirmation, and I don't even know what that is. So uh, working on that. Um, but yeah, so it's been, I, but I also want to have, there's, like she's mentioned, healthy boundaries. I want to make sure that I'm not asking too much or I'm not forcing because I don't want to be that kind of a guy. I don't want to be the d- um, And so it's, where's that healthy boundary for couples of like, hey, you know what? No, this is my boundary. Or, um, you know, we're we're married. It, it's okay. So yeah. that's where I'm. I'm lost. I don't know where that is. Awesome. And as a man, I don't want to force myself. No, I got you. I got you. Um, you're a good man. You're a good man, and you're trying to figure this out in real time and balance um what you what you believe to be our quote unquote needs, and also you want to honor your wife, and you want to do it in this way, in this 21st century way, where you're a masculine male that also does it all perfectly and carries the feminine. Like it's just a mess, right? There's no roadmaps, right? No, um, there isn't. All right. I'm going to reverse engineer this. I'm going to start with you. Okay, Joel. Mm-hmm. And you're going to think, you know where I'm heading. You probably don't. Is that cool? Yeah. So Sounds good. don't try to guess and get there first. Just walk with me. Okay. Okay. Um, what happens the day after, you wanted to have sex the night before and it doesn't happen. What happens the day after? Yeah. What, what is your, what is your, um, de- detachment strategy? Do you, do you pout? Do you get mad? Do you, are you super cool about it? Do you go masturbate by yourself? Like what, what's your thing? What do you do? It's, um, it's huge internal dialogue, uh, Cause, uh, it's fighting and initially it's, how it's dare fighting. you oh, like, uh, no, I, no, it's, it's me fighting, um, my internal dialogue of, well, I guess she doesn't love me. Uh, cause she didn't yep. want to do this. Yes. Um, and I'm not asking that much, uh, because it's a husband and wife thing to do. Yep. Um, and, and it's me fighting that though, going, no, she still loves me. Even if she doesn't want to have sex with me, but then it's like that internal fight. Um, all right. So I want to cast, I want to cast this out here and tell me if I'm wrong. All right. And this is going to take a lot of reflection and don't just make a snap like, no, 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 no. But just think about it for one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most men in the current world we live in live such boring, lame, uninterested, devoid of purpose and desire, disconnected lives. That sex is the last frontier. It's the last place for connection. It's the last place for emotional giving. It's the last place for performing with somebody. You've heard the phrase, women um, solve problems kneecap to kneecap and men shoulder to shoulder. It's the closest you w- men have to shoulder to shoulder. Because at work, we're just doing emails, right? And it's all wrapped up in this one place, And then I know this book has helped bajillions of people and I don't necessarily have a problem with the ethos of it, the five love languages book. But the problem is that book has become etched in concrete. You will do this for me because this is the way, and I don't like that language. I don't think it's, I don't think it's accurate. Okay. When you have placed all connection, all, all the, the question, am I worthy? can only be answered by who loves us and and who do we love? Am I enough? Do you see all of me and still love me? And if the only place in the world where that happens is in the bedroom, then you put a monumental task on a single person, which is you have to carry all of me. Mm. And then... Here's where this gets kind of dicey because I'm going to start talking in, about energy and people are going to tune me out. So stay with me. All right. When often, not always, often, when a woman feels like a man needs sex from her, need is a very maternal energy. 
I have to provide for you, which is a different energy than my husband wants me, which is an Mm. erotic energy. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And often, all across the country, women are telling me over and over that I f- they flip a switch when they are the only person on planet Earth that, that holds their husband in their hand. And he needs sex. I need this from you. Then they become a mom. Oh, yeah. Versus, I really desire you. And then you got your wife over here, and the words she was using out of the gate were need. I don't need this. I don't need, need, need. And neither of y'all are talking about what do you want. Mm. And the words about want, the energy around want is eros. It's erotic, right? That's a totally different body energy. It's a totally different thing you bring to the table. And the beauty of what you guys have done is y'all have wrapped it up in a, I'm assuming a monogamous relationship. It's game on within this boundary you've created for yourself. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, she can't hold you, all of you. Now, go back to what I said earlier. I kind of kept rambling there to give you a second. (laughs) Does that hit you as, no, man, I got a lot of men that I serve with. I got a lot of men that I do cool things with. I have a fulfilling purpose-driven job. I'm running a business. Like, is that, is that you or is it like, oh, no, that kind of sounds like me, man? Um, well, the me today, that is 100% me. Um, I used to be all adventurous, crazy, going out and doing everything. Um, but, yeah, now today it's like, yeah, work straining and just, yeah, there's not not as much adventure or not as much. Like it's, it's not drive. even adventure. Think of purpose. Yeah. Think oh, of yeah. reason to get out of the bed. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, sex becomes a place of desperation. Mm, and that's yeah. kind of it's kind of a turnoff, right? Now there's gonna yeah. be some people who are like, dude, I want somebody to be desperate for me. And that's fine. That's outside of the bell curve. Okay. Whew. Now, Elizabeth, you're hearing this conversation. Jump in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it's definitely ringing true for me. And it, I don't know about maternal, but it does feel like immense pressure. And then I feel guilty for feeling that pressure instead of being honored by that pressure. Sorry, I'm starting to get emotional. No, that's what you just said is so profound. Yes, because there's a difference between I desire you and... Then the lifelong, like, am I enough? Am I beautiful enough? Like, those insecurities will show up, but that's different than, hey, I need you to go get the groceries. I need you to go get some gas in the car, and I need sex three times a week. Mm-hmm. Right? Then it becomes, it becomes, it gets put on a list. And then when that activity is the proof that your husband's lovable or not, <laughs> that's a lot to carry, <laughs> right? It is. How do you experience him when he wants more sex than he's having? Um, The best way I can put it, sorry. The best way I can put it is it feels like he disconnects. Like it's like there's like a light on in the back of his eyes that just stops focusing in or, you know, he'll be quieter than normal. And he's not a super talkative guy, but he'll just, do things more goes on inside, his own. He goes he'll, inside he'll, of himself. Yeah, yeah. He'll get up and, and go walk the dog or go, you know, do things individually instead of kind of including me in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, Joel, um, the words I'm going to use are, I understand they're kind of deflating, so just go with me, okay? Okay. Um, it's been my experience working with men that when it, we get to a place where there's a mi- mix match, right? Or mismatch, however you say it, um, of sexual, like I want to have more sex than not. And more importantly, I want it to be great and I want her to really want it when we do do it, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's a, the, the, it's a mismatch that it becomes an act of desperation. It becomes a thing that I need. It becomes a constant loop in your mind. And then it becomes just about release. Or just about getting getting off. 
and the light burns really bright like a fire until you know, nope, it's not going to happen. And then poof, that flame's out. Or the flame burns real bright. You get off. It's a release. Ah, it's over. Whew. And then that pressure starts building up again for tomorrow. Does that ring a mm-hmm. bell? Yeah, that, uh, that sounds very, very familiar. Okay. All right. So can I tell you both? I think your marriage is freaking incredibly strong. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong with either of you. I don't. I think y'all have fallen into, uh, you haven't fallen into anything. I think y'all are walking the, the lane that the world has handed us for what marriage looks like. Here's a couple of lies. Girls, women, their sex drive is male sex drive light. It's male sex drive divided by two. That's not true. Most women have never been asked, what do you actually want? What are you into? What feels good? What do you like? What do you not like? That's number one. Number two, men have been told that they need this thing and that becomes the driver over I want. I desire my wife. And when you have a and when you have eros in your home, and I'm I'm taking this this little Greek word, it's it's uh, Esther Perel talks a lot about it. When that's in your home, when that becomes the air that you breathe as a as a newlywed couple, I I want her. Then dishes just get done, right? You're able to say, "Hey, I'm really I really would love X, Y, and Z." I can say it out loud instead of this hinting. One more question for you, Joel. I should ask this earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make things really weird at dinner tonight. (laughs) Are there sexual things, positions, things you want to try, things you want to do that you haven't brought up yet? Actually, no, there there are things I do want to try and do, but I have brought them up and they've been shot down. So it's, it's trying to make sure that I don't push those boundaries as well. Okay. All right. So not just frequency, but also, Often people, so good, good on you. Often people, um, and if we had a whole other, <laughs> we could do a whole show on with just you two because y'all are awesome. But if we had a whole other call, I would love to hear how he brings it up, Elizabeth. <laughs> that would just be amazing. <laughs> My guess is it's there's a hem haw to it. There's a ah, uh, or it's brought up like, um, hey, could you pick up some more almond milk at the grocery store? And by the way, I want to try this thing. And Elizabeth, in your mind, you go. I don't know how that's physically possible, but I'll, ooh, right? And it, it's not it's not done out of arrows. It's not done out of desire or want. It's done out of, will you do a task for me? Mm. Mm. Um, instead of, do you want to you do something crazy, right? And one of those is an invitation and one of those is a checklist. All that to say is this. Whew. I want y'all first and foremost to read Emily Nagotsky's book together. Have y'all done that? We haven't, no. Okay, please. I've heard you mention it before. Please get that book and y'all read it together. You're, you'll you both blush because she is, she is as, it's not a faith-based book by any stretch of the imagination at all. <laughs> but it is the best book I've read on A, introducing, it's it, the book is for women. It's written to women on introducing them into this question, what do you want? And most women have, ne- what even feels good? What, like entering into the space, what are the voices? What are the stories that you start to tell yourself or that have been told to you and that you are taking on, right? It just starts from square one. And honestly, what I love about it, it starts with an anatomy lesson. Most women, now I'll say most women, a, 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 a large number of them don't even know that. Like, here's what things are called. And we're going to start there, right? And we, it, go, it, it gets, gets into it. But here's what's amazing. It begins to give you a series of questions you can ask and broaden the conversation in your home. It's not just about this. Can we have intercourse tonight? Because that question is wearing you out, Elizabeth. That question is wearing you out, Joel. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about green lights and red lights. Um, Emily Nagoski, she she throws this idea of sex drive out the window says it's a series of gas pedals and brakes. My guess is you have focused a lot on the gas pedals in the house for Elizabeth. What are her brakes? And her brakes right now are, I don't even think about it. It doesn't even enter my mind. 
By the way, are you on uh, birth control, Elizabeth? Um, yes, technically, but it's non-hormonal or anything, okay, so it wouldn't right. affect. Yeah, I've heard that um, repeatedly. So that's just a quick aside um, that it, it can affect libido. But Joel, I want you to have the conversation, not about what you need. I want you to have the conversation. What do I want in my Ooh. home? What do I want this home to feel like? And I want you to start asking for things like this. Hey, Elizabeth, I got a record player. Will you dance to this song with me? We do have a record player. <laughs> I know. No, I'm just kidding. I was hoping you would. You're from Seattle, for God's sake. But will you dance with me? And Joel, I want you to not, I want you to experience Elizabeth outside of intercourse. I want you to learn to want her. Mm. not to have to have this. And here's the crazy part. Over time, you will need each other like oxygen. You'll become fused. But we're not there yet. Right now, I want y'all to explore play and fun. And sometimes it will lead to intercourse. Sometimes we're going to talk about intercourse beforehand. Sometimes we're going to dance. And right now you're thinking, yeah, dude, but I don't get that release. I don't get that get off. Exactly. And my promise is if you work at it, especially if you work through that book together, Elizabeth, you're going to begin to notice things that feel good and don't feel good. And if you get to the end and y'all have worked through this, go see a doctor. Okay. Go talk to a mm -hmm. professional. Say, hey, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. But your conversation is so, your concerns are so common that I'm, I'm guessing it's a bigger picture than that. Okay, so I've thrown a lot at you, and I haven't given you any bedroom techniques, intentionally so. <laughs> Last thing. What is this, and I, I'm going to say this in a cheesy way, but I'm serious. What is the state of the anxiousness in your home? I'm a ball of anxiety. Like, okay. I am just, I'm like a rubber band ball. Like About what? Everything. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life. I want you to work through it from start to finish. Okay. Because if your body is anxious, if it's sounding the alarms, if you're in fight or flight, having a moment of intimacy, like deep sexual connection with your new husband, is insane to your body. Because your body's trying to not die. Can y'all not all see what's happening? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> having sex sounds insane. Why would you stop to do that? You know what else is insane? Sleep. Why in the world would you sleep? The only thing that makes sense is mainlining sugar and carbs because it keeps us going. Coffee too, yeah. Well, I'm on cup number 44 <laughs> for today, right? And Joel, mm -hmm. here's your homework. Besides reading this book alongside uh, Elizabeth. By the way, I don't know, I don't know Emily Nagoski, Dr. Nagoski. I don't know her. I've never met her. Um, I just think the book's in incredible. Um, I want uh, you, and this is going to sound nutty, I want you to start um, hanging out with a group of guys once a week. Okay. The research says two nights a week. I want you to start with one. And mm -hmm. you might think, I don't have any guy friends. Exactly. I want you to have a hard conversation. Um, in fact, I'm going to send you my buddy Ken Coleman's got a, uh, a uh, it's like a, an assessment for what job you should be doing. Mm -hmm. I want you to take it. Okay. Because I want you to open your eyes ready to go be of service to something today. Mm. I want you to begin thinking, no, I play a key role at wherever it is I work, whether I'm a plumber or I'm a physician or whatever, a surgeon or I sweep the streets. I have a role to play here. And that way, the entire weight of your identity and worth doesn't rest on an orgasm. Mm. Yeah. And by the way, taking that pressure off will make your orgasms, A, way more frequent, and B, infinitely more amazing. Sounds good to me. Right? Right? <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, I've thrown a lot at you. What are you hearing? What are you feeling? I'm feeling hopeful. I just, I really, I really want to do the right thing, and I, I, we have that's a lot to work ah, on. That's and anxiety talking. <laughs> Get out of that. There's not a right, there's not a th right thing to do. I want you to start thinking about ways of being. 
I'd like to not be anxious. There you go. <laughs> about everything. Good. It's hard to be sexual when you're trying to not die. It's hard to be sexual when you're exhausted. It's hard to be sexual when your husband deals with anxiety by having sex. <laughs> right? <laughs> Joel, what are you feeling? Uh, yeah, this is um, it's actually really good. I, I knew there was stuff we were missing because um, we were trying to trying to solve all this on our own and figure it all out. And I hadn't even thought about job. And so I, I, I was in a high adrenaline job before, um, which was great. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, this is this is good information. I appreciate it. Your fun homework for tonight is I want y'all to go to dinner and I want y'all to write out. Here's some things I want. And Joel, you can put the four or five things you want to try in the bedroom. That's fine. But Elizabeth might put, I want to become more sexual with my husband. Not do it more. I want to create desire in my home. I want that to be a thing we practice. And here's some things I love. I love it when you hold my hand in public. I love it when you put your hand on my knee under the table. I love it when you put your arm around me. I love it when you open my door. I love it when I get home and the dishes are already done. I don't know what those things are, but here's some things I want and here's some things I love. And Joel, here's some things I want. I want my wife to look at me as though like I'm kind of awesome. And you got to figure out how you're going to go be awesome, right? Because she's not going to lie to you. And I want my wife to initiate sometimes. I want my wife to hold my hand. I want my wife to desire me. Okay, cool. What must be true? We're going to work there. And these other things upstream begin to open up in an entirely new way. And let's be really careful about need energy. Because need is parent-child. Want desire that's love it's amazing that's eros that's erotic that's a husband and a wife getting off the rails thank y'all so much for calling joel elizabeth hang on the line we're gonna hook you up with some free stuff call anytime let me know how all that uh, reading that book goes can't wait to hear how it goes we'll be right back i talk about this all the time Good deep sleep has haunted and eluded me for decades. And over the years, I've tried multiple supplements and gadgets and all sorts of hacks and lifestyle changes to deepen and improve my sleep. And I'm telling you, in my opinion, the single greatest technological breakthrough in the history of sleep was created by my friends at 8 Sleep. And I am thrilled that 8 Sleep is partnering with the Dr. John Deloney Show to take care of our listeners and change the way you sleep and ultimately change your marriage, change your health, and change your life. Our friends at 8 Sleep have created a fitted sheet with cooling and heating technology called the 8 Sleep Pod. The pod cover can be added over any mattress. It's like a fitted sheet for individualized temperature adjustments. Both sides of the bed can do different temperatures. It's amazing. And it cools down or warms up all throughout the night, and it reads your body. So at certain times of the night, my body will cool down, it will warm up, and it will track with me. It learns what your body needs, and it does this automatically. And in turn, it improves your sleep quality like you have to experience to believe. It also has built-in vibration alarms. So instead of using my phone, now my mattress gently wakes me up every morning. It's amazing. There's even sleep and health reports for each side of the bed, including sleep stages, sleep time, heart rate, HRV, and you don't have to wear anything. This is the ultimate sleep experience. You owe it to yourself and your marriage to at least check it out and learn more. Go to 8sleep.com to read more, learn more, and see if you want to change how you sleep and show up in your life. That's E-I-G-H-T-S-L-E-E-P.com slash Deloney or enter promo code Deloney at checkout for up to $400 in savings on an 8sleep bundle. All right, let's go out to Orange County, California, home of social distortion, and talk to Austin. What's up, Austin? How are you doing, Dr. John? I'm oh, good, brother. What's up? I can't believe I'm actually speaking to you. I can't believe That's I'm talking crazy. to you, man. That's fantastic. What's up? 
Um, well, first off, I'd like to say um, thank you so much for all you guys are doing. Um, my life's been on a positive um, direction ever since I found you guys. I like to thank at least. And um, yeah. Very cool, man. Well, thanks uh, for being with us. What's up? How can I help? I wish I could um, put my question in a few words, but let it long rip. story short, let um, it rip. I really haven't been able to find a better purpose in life or just, a, I don't know, like dreaming. <laughs> um, I got out of the military back in 2021. I come from a military family, and I've always thought that I was going to be a soldier, always thought I was going to be going to overseas. Um, don't mean to sound uh, negative or depressed, but never thought that I was going to be making it out alive. Um, and I thought that was just going to be what I was going to be doing. And um, ever since I got separated from the military, um, I've been having a really tough time just finding a purpose to even you know get up in the morning or, um, I mean, I have a job and I recently even got a huge pay bump, but, uh, I guess the pay bump didn't really give me the happiness or I, I thought it was going to change everything for me once I got the pay bump that I was desiring, but. So tell yeah, me, tell me about not, this idea of, of, I mean, back up. Why, why did you, why did you get discharged from the military? Um, I had a injury to my right, my dominant hand. Oh man! Huh. And I was like my um, grip strength on my dominant hand is about thirty percent of where it was, and at the time, um, I just was dropping stuff. <laughs> okay. Hey, Austin, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I want you to be as honest as possible with me. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. You think about hurting yourself? No. I don't think about hurting myself, but I do think all the time that this world would be much better off without. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I don't think about hurting myself. I got. Um, I don't believe my mom you. To take oh, hold on, hold on, Austin. I don't believe you. What do you mean? <laughs> I think you're way closer to the edge than you're letting people know. Um, well, I, Austin, put it this way. Austin, I Austin, 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 people... tell me the truth. Yes, sir. No, I'm not suicidal. That's what you're asking. Okay. Where does this story come and from that you're going to die on a battlefield? Um, like I said, my grandfather was my, oh, didn't say this yet. My grandfather was a uh, general in the Korean army. Okay. Um, he was my hero, my just one person that I've ever looked up to and person that I wanted to be like. And he served in multiple he um, wars and was wounded at each one. Okay. And I just... Um, but he came home to know. see you. He came home to start a family, right? Yeah. So you took his story and you added your part to it, which is that you die out there. Why? Why that ending? Why not come home and start a family and sit with your grandson and pass it on? Um, I don't think anyone's ever asked the question that way, but <clears throat> um, sorry. Uh, no, you're okay, man. This is hard. I'm not going to lie. Um... The fact that my family would be taken care of financially if I did. Exactly. Pass overseas um, gave me a real sense hey, of... Austin, remember um, remember how you thought getting the pay bump was going to make everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> Your family doing life with a check minus Austin is that pain times a thousand. They wouldn't be taken care of without you there'd be a gaping hole in their world. And so somehow you built a story. Your granddad sounds amazing. Was your father in the military too? Um, just briefly, not, okay. nothing, nothing. I saw, I'm a boss. So, 
your 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 grandfather was a was a veteran, an amazing guy. Did you ever get to meet him? Did you get to sit with him? Do things with him? Yes. Okay. Yes. Give me some of the feelings you remember as a little boy with your granddad. Um, just a uh, level of gravity. Just I, I'm, I knew everything she did was um, moral. Um, I knew if I could just be 10% of the person that he is. No, nope, you're already getting up and um, dividing yourself into pieces. I don't want that. I want you to tell me. Being around him, what did it feel like? Who was the guy? He was a good man. He was moral. He did the right thing. Did he treat you right? Did he treat his wife right? Yeah. Okay. What was his What was his civilian job when he got home? He joined the Rotary Foundation. Did um, charity work until the day he passed. Okay. He was a man of service. Yes. He. Hold on. He hold on. Hold on. Others. Hold on. Stay with me. You've taken be a great husband. Be a great dad. Be a great um, person of service. His whole life was dedicated to service. He was a great grandfather. And you've taken all those lessons and distilled them down to, I want to die on a battlefield. And so I want to ask you, finding purpose... Where could... You can't... You, the military... That, that dream... I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to be career. I'm going to be just like my granddad. Okay. In this one facet, you can't. But can you still be a man that treats his wife right? Yes. Can you be a man that takes care of his kids and his family and his, dedicates his life to service? Absolutely. Can you be the granddad whose grandkid sits up and just goes, man, I don't be like that guy? Um, that sounds really great. But um, I forgot to mention that I am extremely against marriage and or having kids. Um, and I don't. And that's that's the other thing. I just can't picture myself. Why? Why are you against that? Having my own family. <laughs> Why? Uh, Where does that um, story come I from? I don't think I've ever seen uh, personally in, um, somebody's life getting better. And you're looking, I, you're talking to one. I know. That's why I wanted to call you. I need the confirmation that you're real, sir. Yeah, I'm real. I don't even know. I'm real. I'm real. Sure and a hundred percent of my life is better because of the person I chose to marry. And a hundred percent of my life is better because of my two kids. I have less money, less sleep, less time, and everything is better. I have to share my interest. I have to involve other people and everything is bigger. Everything is better. Harder, yeah. Worth more, absolutely. And somehow you've told yourself the story of like dying on a battlefield is somehow um, make somebody's life better. But becoming a great romantic partner being a great dad. That's noble too, brother. But here's the bigger picture. Circling back. You've told yourself a story that the world would be better with you not here. And Austin, if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, I don't lie to people. What you're saying is not true. Thank you. <laughs> the world would not be a better place. Now, I'm not saying you have to go get married. I'm not saying you have to go have kids. I'm telling you that you've constructed a box of stories that feels like it's made out of concrete, but it's not. It's made out of straw. Yeah. And, um, I, guess, I don't know. It's just, um, even... Even with my own parents, I guess, for if I was to use an example, um, I feel like my mother's life would have been just much better if she didn't have... Not true. Uh, I don't ever want you to repeat that story again as long as you live, because it's a lie. It's not true. It's not true. Okay? And so here's what I need you to do. I need you to feel it, because I get in your body, it doesn't feel right. 
but I need you to know the facts aren't matching up with your feelings right now. And that's okay. Uh When's the last time you talked to a professional? Um, I did one session through BetterHelp, but um, with finances, and to be honest, I have a very hard time getting connected with somebody. Um, and I knew it was going to take a long time, and to for me to be able to open up to somebody like that. Okay, you, um, you've done a, an an incredibly courageous job of opening up to me, and I'm a stranger on a podcast. Well, that's I wouldn't say stranger. I've been. I'm almost <laughs> living with you on my tablet over here. Yeah, you you watch it and listen, but but I'm a stranger. And here's the deal. The path forward for you has to go through a professional counselor, professional therapist, period, end of story. 100% you're worth it. You're worth every minute of it. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you three free months with better help. But also, I think at this point, I think you need to go talk to a live therapist in your area. Okay. And yes, it's going to take some time. You're worth it. Being in the military would take time. You had this dream of yourself. You had it all played out. And that dream is going to be different. But the stories that people would be better with you not here are not true. You're not a burden, man. not your mom's life wouldn't be better without you here your granddad's life wouldn't have been better without it's just not true yet i know that feeling in your chest is big it feels like it's taken over everything so to honor me to honor the heritage of your grandfather and all he went through The shrapnel you're taking is not on a battlefield. It's in your mind. The courage you owe me, the courage you owe him, is before the the day is over, you're going to make some phone calls and you're going to get in to see somebody ASAP. And you're going to be honest with them and you're going to tell them, I think the world would be better without me here. And I don't have a purpose or a role. You're going to make that call and then you're going to go sit and see them. If you can't get in for a couple of weeks, you're going to call better help. You're going to get on them within the 48 hours and I'm going to pay for it. But I want you to begin to ask yourself, what is it about my granddad off the battlefield that I can become in this world? A man of service, a man who takes care of his community, a man who takes care of his family, a man who loves deeply and really, really well. Where can we do that? That becomes your new adventure, my brother. I'm going to send you a copy of both of my books and my friend Ken Coleman's Get Clear Assessment. You can begin looking at jobs. What kind of role do I want to play? What kind of purpose do I want to have? I had this dream, it's not going to happen. i got to grieve it. Then we're going to go from there. Call any time, my brother. I'm with you. But no more. No more are we going to go around with a story that um, people would be better off with me not here. That's not true. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you showed bravery today. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Be honest. How often do you find yourself pausing in the middle of a day and it feels like there is so much going on? And you find yourself wondering, what would I do with just a spare hour or 30 minutes? Can you even imagine? And it's in these moments that we often realize we're living someone else's life. Everyone else's schedules, priorities, and emergencies are driving our lives, and we can't keep carrying this load for everyone and everything. And it's in these moments when it feels like too much or when you need some help parsing through all the chaos that talking to a professional therapist can be a game changer. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you have with boundaries, time, commitments, and your own self-worth. And that can be in relationships with your friends, people at work, your significant other, or even how you can make and keep commitments with yourself. 
for figuring out what even makes you happy anymore and how to go make it happen. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, try BetterHelp. Because therapy isn't just for people who've experienced trauma. It's great for building skills so you can be the best version of yourself. BetterHelp is completely online, so it's flexible enough to fit your schedule. Just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no extra cost. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. All right, let's go out to Knoxville, Tennessee, and talk to Dan the Man. What's up, Daniel? Hey, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Dr. John. You too, brother. What's up, man? Well, my my wife and I, we have this we have this reoccurring argument that, that tends to tends to uh cause some tension between us. And otherwise we have a really great relationship. But um, <laughs> everything's <laughs> good right. except she sets the house on fire and I'm just kidding. All right, so you have the same fight. What is it? Well, it revolves around her career, and she's she's currently a music teacher for a K through eighth school. And oh, God bless uh, her. And I, I know she she does an awesome job, but she she doesn't act like she's happy. And so usually the she'll she'll kind of get to a point every now and then where she starts looking for other jobs, and she doesn't have any luck. And I think that it's because that she's looking for something really specific for like music teacher jobs in certain grade levels. And so uh, the argument tends to happen whenever I uh, suggest maybe learning a new skill or, or going back to college to learn to, or to get a more fulfilling career. And, and she's open to doing something different, but she just doesn't, she's not at all open to the idea of learning something new or, or going back to school. Um, <clears throat> so it's, that's, uh, that's the main, the main thing that's happening. And when she sits down, when she sits down with you, Daniel, is she asking what, what should I do to make myself, um, feel better and not hate my job? Or is she sitting down with her husband trying to connect? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of it is just trying to connect. And okay. I, I think that another part, like that was part of my question too. At what point, I mean, that's the tale as old as time to, to just listen. But when does just listening become neglectful or dismissive? Yeah, I, there, there's a difference between, well, as a man, you're trying to solve a problem. Like, I hate right. my job. Cool. Get another one. <laughs> right? There's a huge hill in front of us. All right, well, hike it or lay down, but those are your two choices, right? Um, but instead, she might be reaching out and asking you, do you see me and do you hear me? Yeah. And so you, you, you feel it as neglectful. Have you ever simply asked, are you asking, do you want me just to listen or are you asking for my input here? Just that question. Yeah, no, I guess I need to do that. Yeah. Um, th- you do. also, here's another thing. You also do not have to play the role of trash bin. Okay. You don't have to be a dumpster for your wife. And okay. you can say, hey, when you come home and tell me how bad everything is in your job and how the students are terrible and the administration doesn't do anything and the parents are morons, I get really defensive because I want to take care of and love and honor my wife. Exactly. And say those words out loud and then say, I also know you're brilliant, you're smart, and you know that I will support you to the end of time. If you want to go back to school, you want to do another thing, but I know you're not asking me to do that, but there's only so much I can hear. Mm -hmm. And it's not you not wanting to connect. It's you saying, I want to hear how your day is going but I can only hear the complaints up to here. And I, I can't give you that. I can't give you that amount for you. Right. I, right. I, I do have a, uh, I remember very distinctly, I came home from one of my jobs that I'd worked at for about I don't know, four or five months. And, um, I just kept complaining and complaining and complaining. My wife just said, Hey, I've been thinking, I have a good idea. And I was like, what is that? And she goes, you should quit. <laughs> and she didn't tell me, or you should go get another degree and you should, but she's like, you should quit. And that was a good wake up call for me. Like, oh, this isn't, this isn't helping anything. Here's, oh, yeah. here's part two to this. What other ways do you and your wife connect? Wow. Well, uh, I guess that's a loaded question. We, we, uh, 
we we spend a lot of time together just at home after after our son goes to bed, and that's that's kind of our time. We put him in bed early, so we kind of have time together, and we prioritize that. Okay, but what does that look like? Y'all both sitting on your couch, her on her phone, you on your phone, y'all watching some show. That's almost exactly what it looks like. That's yeah. not that. Yeah, that's not connection, brother. That's dying next to each other on a couch of loneliness. Okay, that's what that is. Connection would look like you waking up every morning and looking at your wife and saying, "Hey, how can I love you today?" Yeah. Not pretending we're we're connected just because we're in proximity to each other. You've been there, dude. You've been at a, like at a family get together, and you are as lonely as you've ever been, surrounded by people that love you. Yeah. Right. Sure, yeah. And that's the marriage y'all have created. And so, if the only bridge she has to you is negativity, that's the bridge she's going to use. It's mm. often the same way. The only bridge men have to connection is sex. And so, they'll just keep going, I, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. Instead of backing up and saying, are there other ways that I can get connection and intimacy and purpose? And so, maybe you proposing, hey, I want to start doing... Once the kid is in bed, in fact, I'm going to send you all of the questions for humans, couples, and I'll send you the dating ones too. Y'all are already married, but y'all still have fun with them. I want you to propose. Can we put our phones down? Can we just do a week without phones? Okay. Can we play a fun game? Can we play Uno? Can we play strip poker? Can we do something together? Yeah. And if she says, why? Say, I miss you, and I'm not doing a great job connecting with you. And so let's look for ways to connect. How's that ringing true with you? Well, I, I, I think it's, this is quite a, a different call than I expected. <laughs> I get that a lot, man. <laughs> no, it's great. I think it's one of a great direction, and I, I think it's very insightful. Uh, yeah, I definitely want I think that's, that's important. All right, let, let me frame right. it this way. So if I'm you, here's how I would do this. You don't have to do any at all, but I'm going to give you a playbook, okay? Okay. I would take my wife out on a date. How long have y'all been married? Eight years this year. Eight years? You have one kid? Yes. Oh, God help you. Y'all waited yeah. a long time, right? We did. All yeah. right. Here's how you have this. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Here's what you say. We were married for seven years, six years, and then we had a baby. And now we've just opened our eyes and the smoke is starting to clear and we have never been married and had a baby before. Mm -hmm. I want to build a whole new marriage. Are you in? What does that mean? I don't do a very good job connecting with you. I plop down on the couch with my phone and turn on a TV show. I don't even know what makes you laugh anymore. I don't know what you think is funny anymore. I don't know what books you're reading. I don't know what podcasts you listen to. Like, I want to begin to connect with you. That means we're going to have to just practice some things and do some things differently. Are you in? Mm. All only time I hear you really spill in your heart to me is when you're telling me that you hate your job and go, I want to defend you and protect you. And you don't need that for me because you're good at what you do. But I want to find other ways for us to connect. What does that look like? How can I love you today? Bro, you sit down and have that conversation. One, you might just melt her. She might just get up and walk out of the restaurant and be like, what have you done with my husband? <laughs> um, here's the thing. You're being very vulnerable when you do this. Yeah. She might tell you, no. I'm tired. I teach all day. Then I put our kid to bed. I don't want to do anything. Like, no. And if that's the case, you all need to go see a marriage counselor because your marriage is in trouble. Okay? Okay. But most of the time, especially when husband sits down, plans the night, you get the babysitter, and you are signaling, it's time for us to build a new marriage because we have a new marriage, whether we build a new one or not. It's all different now. I'm in. Are you? Now you're oh, on to something. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. How does that sound? That's awesome. I, I really appreciate it. I think that's, that's much better than I even expected. Awesome. So hang on the line here. I'm going to send you those questions for humans cards. It's going to give you all a free pass to put your phones down, talk, laugh, be honest with each other. 
You get to build something totally new, man. And for most couples, that's super intimidating, and I get that. But man, when you rebuild a bunch of times, it becomes the funnest thing in the world. Up, oh, never been married before after this. <laughs> Never been married before after a kid in high school. Never been married before after burying a parent. Never been married before after whatever the job loss. You get to build something new. You get to build something new. You get to build something new. And I think that rebuild is an amazing, life-altering process. If you welcome it instead of fight it. I'm proud of you for being a husband that still loves his wife and just wants to figure out how to connect. Proud of you, my brother. Let me know how it goes. I'll walk with you any way I can. Hey, uh, everybody, hang on here. We have uh, Am I the Problem coming up. Hey, what's up? Deloney here. Listen, you and me and everybody else on the planet has felt anxious or burned out or chronically stressed at some point. In my new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, you'll learn the six daily choices that you can make to get rid of your anxious feelings and be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you so you can build a more peaceful, non-anxious life. Get your copy today at johndeloney.com. All right, we're back, Kelly, for Am I the Problem? Let's do it. Yes, all right, this is from Susan in San Antonio. My husband wants to go on a weekend Vegas trip with me, with the men and his family. They don't have a men's trip, or they haven't gone on a men's trip since he was a young boy. The only issue is that I'm currently pregnant. I will be five months pregnant when the trip takes place. My pregnancy is healthy and I have no complications. When he asked me my thoughts on this, I told him I'd rather him not go. I explained to him that this is a very vulnerable time for me and that by him going, I would feel that my feelings were being dismissed and that I would, be feel, I would feel abandoned. Initially, he was okay with this answer, said he would not go. However, as the weeks pass, the argument continues to come up. He questioned how this trip would be any different in comparison to trips that we have often, that we were taken after our child was grown. Am I in the wrong? Man. Thanks for this question. Um, I guess I need some more context here. Um, it's, it's different. So his response is not a good one, but I need to know more about her feelings. Her feelings are real and they're right and all good. But at five months pregnancy of a healthy pregnancy, I, I can't think of a greater thing for their marriage than him to go spend time with his family and get together with men in their life. Now, if they're going to go do something that she doesn't want them, him doing, and she doesn't want to have that conversation and she's going to blame it on the pregnancy. Don't do that. But from this side, I'm feeling like she's the problem. What do you think? I agree. If it's, I mean, yes, I know that this is their first, it sounds like, but she's five months pregnant. And everything's healthy and everything's going well. Totally different story if it's I've had complications. I've been, you know, throwing up since day one all day long. Different story. Like, I need your help here. But it's the men and his family, so it's not like it's a bachelor party, you know. Well, I mean, there's some, there's some men in your family that can get off the yeah, rails. But she, the way true. she said it in the question was, he hasn't done this for a long time. Yeah, it says that they haven't been on a men's trip since he was a young boy. So it, it, it feels like she doesn't like the, the idea of this trip. And what I don't like about that is instead of saying, I don't like it when you're around these men or the idea, I know this guy is going to pressure everybody to go to strip clubs. It's going to be a whole thing. Or we don't have enough money right now for you to go blow this much money in Vegas. Whatever the thing is, I don't like it being dropped onto I'm pregnant. I see it differently. Okay, go for it. I think she's just being whiny. (laughs) (laughs) I think that it's... Oh, you get to go to Vegas and I don't get to go? That or just, I don't, you know, I want you here. And I mean, yes, if you're giving birth to a human, if you're pregnant, you, yes, you deserve some pampering. Yes. No problem. But it's not like he said, I'm going to go spend the next three weeks in Vegas. It's a weekend with his family. I mean, you know, great. Unless there's a problem that she is seeing that she's not directly, that she's not approaching. I mean, she needs, if there's a real problem, talk about it. I don't like your uncle... David, he's, you know, creepy or yeah. whatever. But if it's just, I don't want you to go because I'm pregnant, that's not fair. How would she feel if it was a girl's trip? And he was like, I just need you home? Or she, I mean, what's the difference in, like, if she was like, I'm going to go away with the girls for the weekend and I'm five months pregnant, what's the difference? 
Well, she would never do that because she needs him. I don't know. I feel like the more I talk, the more in trouble I'm going to get. I don't think so. I just think she's being a little whiny. I'd, <laughs> I, uh, I may get in trouble for that one. No, you're allowed to say whatever you want. I think moving... F- <laughs> What's funny is 20 years in, me and a couple of my buddies, uh, Mike Ness, the singer of Social D, had cancer, throat cancer, and he's better. And so they're doing a tour. And so the first night of the tour is in Vegas. And so we all got tickets to go visit it. And my wife, as I was saying, like, hey, would you mind if... She's like, oh my gosh, you have to go, go. And so I think most of it was, ah, weekend with John, go on, that'd be awesome. (laughs) So it's coming. My husband and one of my kids are going out of town this weekend. I'm already planning. I saw you making snow angels in the carpet earlier in preparation. I can't wait. (laughs) I'm just so excited. Yeah. Sorry, honey, I think you might be the problem. If you disagree, send all your hate mail to Kelly's Instagram account. Love you guys. Stay in school. Bye. 